concentration of solutions um, is used to distinguish between two solutions that may have the same um, solute and solvent. And concentrations can be used in calculations um, and can be converted into conversion factors, which is what I'm going to show you today. So concentration expressed as a percentage, 15% um, if it's a mass mass concentration of sodium chloride. If you're going to take, if you're given that percent concentration, you can turn it into a fraction. So any percentage is a fraction of 100, right? So 15% would mean that you have 15 out of 100. Since it is mass mass, we understand that it's 15 grams of our solute sodium chloride and 100 grams of our whole solution. If it was mass volume, it would still be the same numbers, 15 percent, so 15 over 100, but it would be grams of solute over mill 100 milliliters of solution. Okay. For conversion factors, it's just writing your relationship as a fraction. So for conversion factors, we can always turn a fraction um, into two different fractions. We can have the grams of solute on top and the um, grams of solution on the bottom, but we can also flip it over and write the fraction upside down. Um, so we will always have two conversion factors for any fraction that we can write. In terms of concentration, molarity is also used and it's the moles of solute per liter of solution. So if you're given a concentration that is three molar um, potassium hydroxide, that means that you have three moles of your solute in every one liter of your whole solution. Okay, this is not a fraction of 100 because it's not a percentage. So it is the moles for every one liter. Anytime you can write a fraction, we can flip it over and make a second fraction, and this time we put the liters on top and the moles on the bottom. So this is how we can take our, con our concentrations, percentage, and molarity and turn them into fractions. It is the fractional form that we will use when we're doing math problems where we're using those concentrations to convert. Okay. I have some examples up here that we're going to work through you, so you can see how those um, percentages, those concentrations are converted into fractions and used in these problems. The first one says how many milliliters of a 35% NaOH solution can be made with 75 grams of NaOH? Okay. So first step, these are our numbers. Okay. Notice that the 35%, since it's a percent, it's a concentration. If you see a concentration, if it's a percentage or a molarity, go ahead and write it as a fraction because that's the way you're going to use it in the problem. So 35% NaOH means that we have 35 grams of NaOH. We'll assume that it's mass mass since, uh, or sorry, mass volume. There we go. So that's grams of NaOH. If it's mass volume, it, for every 100 milliliters of the solution. And we'll designate mass volume here. Okay. So our percentage I've written as a fraction. And just understand that you can flip it over and make two fractions. I'm just going to write one for now. Then to start the problem, you have to evaluate the two numbers that were given in your problem. Never start with the number that you can write as a fraction. The fraction is going to be your conversion factor that you're going to use to convert one unit to another. So you don't want to start with the fraction. So if we don't start with the fraction, that means we're going to start with our 75 grams of sodium, hy of sodium hydroxide. Basically, we are trying to convert our grams of sodium hydroxide to milliliters of solution. And we're going to use this fraction as our conversion factor to make that conversion. Our units have to cancel out. Whatever unit we're given, that unit, grams of NaOH, has to be on the bottom of our conversion factor. So of, with my fraction here, I'm going to have to flip it over and put the 35 grams of NaO, NaOH on the bottom and the 100 milliliters of solution on the top so that my units will cancel out. 
Now it's just a matter of doing the math. So you get your calculator and you have 75 divided by 35 times 100 and I get 214.2857 and several other digits. Uh, again, your answers to a math problem have to be uh, expressed in the correct number of significant figures. We have two significant figures in the number given here, two in this number. The 100 is considered exact, so we don't count significant figures for that. So our answer can only have two. So I'm going to round this to 210 milliliters of solution. Okay? And that's how we used our percent concentration as a conversion factor to convert from grams of sodium hydroxide to milliliters of the whole solution. Likewise, we can use molarity as a conversion factor as well. In this question, it states how many grams of um, sulfuric acid are in 150 milliliters of a two molar sulfuric acid solution. Okay? So again, first step, evaluate your numbers. You have 150 milliliters of your solution. The solution is two molar. Can you write any of those numbers as a fraction? Yes. Anything that's a concentration, we're going to go ahead and write as a fraction. So 2.0 molar H2SO4 means that you have two moles of H2SO4 in every one liter of your solution. All right. So of your two numbers, you have to pick which one you're going to start your math problem with. Again, my rule is don't start with a fraction. So you're not going to start with a two molar because we're going to use that as a conversion factor. So I'm going to start with my 150 milliliters of solution. 150 milliliters of H2SO4. Okay. First step, I have to get rid of or, or convert my volume of H2SO4 to another unit. I'm not going to be able to go right to moles and or right to grams in one step but I can use this information to convert it to moles. So I need to have milliliters on the bottom. This fraction has liters in it. You can also convert that. Then you could say two moles of H2SO4 in every 1,000 milliliters of solution because a liter is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters. So I'm going to use it in this form. That cancels out my milliliters. So my milliliters of my sulfuric acid cancel out. Now I have moles of sulfuric acid, H2SO4. I need grams. So this is where you go to the periodic table. You add up the molar mass. You add up two hydrogens, one sulfur, four oxygens. And that should be 98 grams. So for every one mole of H2SO4, it weighs 98.0 grams. I had to put moles on the bottom, so my moles cancel. And that leaves me with grams of H2SO4. So this is where you pull out your calculator again. You have 150 milliliters times 2 divided by 1,000 times 98 and I got 29.4 on my calculator. So again, we need to look at significant figures. We have two significant figures here, two here. That means our answer can only have two. So I'm going to round it to 29 grams of H2SO4. All right, so this is an example of how you can use um, your concentration of molarity as a conversion factor to convert between volume of your solution and moles of your solution. And then, of course, we went one step farther and converted our moles to grams using the periodic table. So these are examples of how you can use concentration as conversion factors in your math problems. The first step, or the most important step, I would say, is picking out the concentration from the question and writing it as a fraction. 
Do that first when you have a concentration in your question, and then you will use that as a conversion factor in the problem. So um, doing more examples of these will um, improve your ability to uh, complete these kind of questions, and I suggest lots of practice.